Epic. Epic! Epic Statue One speedruns of statistics! Brian Stevens! Versus! Chapter Decision Trees! Begin! When it comes to decision trees, decision trees are something that take a bunch of X variables, a whole bunch of X variables, and look at one Y variable. So let's make sure we understand this, that we're looking at one Y variable. That means on our tree over here, we have one Y variable of interest, and then we have a whole ton of X variables. You'll often see this down here on the bottom that your tree is splitting up on multiple X variables. Now the X variables that can go into our tree are going to be things that are either quantitative or categorical, either which way is fine. And the same works for your Y variables. Both your X and your Y variables can be quantitative or categorical variables. It's fine either way, but there are variables that we do not want to include in our tree. The variables we do not want to include in our tree are going to be identifiers or things that act like identifiers. And what do we mean by things that act like identifiers? Something that acts like an identifier is going to be a categorical variable with tons of levels. Like one of my favorite questions, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? And I'd probably say like everything but the kitchen sink or cookie dough. And there's so many levels to this. Like think about it. Levels is an answer to a categorical question. So like what state were you born in? Could have up to 51 levels or 50 levels. I gotta figure out how many states there are. So with this, we would have lots of levels. Or you could say, that does not apply to me. I was not born in a state. So there are more levels to the variable than we even considered. And with this right here, if the variable has too many levels, it can act like an identifier. Now, identifiers are things that are unique for each and every observation. A categorical variable with many levels might act like an identifier, but is not truly an identifier. Next, we need to understand what partitioning the data means. And partitioning the data looks like the following. We take our data, and it's in one big clump. Basically, you have everybody up here all together, maybe like 800 observations. And then you're gonna take and section people off into different groups. Now, this is done via the X variables here, and they're not always equally split. Sometimes you might have like 650 people in this group, and maybe 150 people in this group over here. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go right over here and look at a decision tree. So let's go ahead and grab a decision tree and let's go into decision trees now. We're pulling up the decision tree here and let's take a look at a decision tree with some data. Here is our decision tree data and let's go ahead and make a decision tree and start sectioning apart, sectioning apart the data. Analyze partition, and let's go here to predictive model, partition, uh, it's off the screen a little bit, so I'll let you see. So we're gonna go here to analyze, predictive model and partition, which is going to bring up the decision tree interface. Now, one thing I wanna point out right here is we will use as many X variables as we can, but we will not use things like identifiers. So we don't wanna use this one right here. Also, major is going to be a variable with too many levels, and it's not quite an identifier, but it'll act like one. So once again, we do not use things that are identifiers or act like identifiers, but we could predict something like, uh, let's say if you were born in Tennessee, I'm just gonna take a whole bunch of X variables here, but I'm not gonna take major. I'm just gonna drop these over here and I'm gonna take more X variables. And I'm also not gonna take uh, somebody's favorite phone app because that'll also act like an identifier. And let's just put all of these X variables in right here and let's look at the decision tree. Now in this decision tree, we are predicting a categorical Y variable. We know this because we can color the points because we, pe we have people here who are born in Tennessee and people who are not born in Tennessee. And when we split the tree right here, notice how when we split the tree, it'll split them into groups like we were just looking at a moment ago. So we can see right here, depending on this variable right here, we have people's views on life on earth. We have people who are more likely to be born in Tennessee or people who are less likely to be born in Tennessee. We can split on any variable we want, like we could split specific right here just to see what happens if we choose a specific variable. So we don't usually force a tree to make a split, but let's go to a variable like, are you in the honors program? And with this right here, there's really not much of a difference. If you look at this, the R squared is actually horrible right here. We have an R squared of zero, opposed to the previous split where we actually got an R squared of 3%, still not that much of the variation explained. I'm trying to make sure the whole tree is shown on the screen. But if you notice, 
We started up here with 1905 people and we split them into two groups. It doesn't have to split evenly, but it's splitting on this variable and separating people out depending on their views. So this is what we have right here. We are partitioning into splits and into different groups. When do we stop splitting the tree? Now, this is a big question right here. We stop splitting the tree usually when we see smaller increases in R squared or the splits become illogical. Now, what do I mean by a smaller split in R squared? This is where we're looking at the split history. So the split history right here, the split history is going to show us the history of the R squared. So as we make more and more splits right here, as we go into more and more groups of people, like this 150 might be split apart into other groups on another X variable, maybe 100 go over here and 50 go over here, what we would notice is we would notice that the R squared would go up each time. We'd start with an R squared of zero, and then maybe the R squared goes up to like 10%. And usually it gets smaller as it goes up each time. So here's after the first split, which is right here. But once we get to another split down here at the bottom, we would have three, two splits. And the two splits are as follows right here. Let's highlight this in blue. This is the two splits, split one, split two right there. So you're at your second split. And then we would look at, sorry, it's changing pens on me. We'd look at the increase in R squared right here. So if you notice, the R squared is going up and it generally goes up less and less. So after each split, it's important to note that your R squared will increase. Your R squared will increase after each split. And we generally decide to stop splitting the tree as we see smaller and smaller splits. Uh, increases in the R squared. And where do we see those increases in the R squared? In the split history, which is going to show us after each split, how much the R squared is in increasing. When we interpret the tree, we need to know how to interpret the R squared. So if this tree right here was trying to predict something like, let's say, um, let's say it's predicting born in Tennessee, whether it feel born in Tennessee, were you born in Tennessee? That's what this tree is predicting right here. The R squared is going to be the following. Let's take a look at an interpretation for the R squared. We need to remember that it is blank percent of the variation in Y is explained by the variables in the tree. So blank percent of the variation in Y is explained by the variables in the tree, and we plug into here the R squared. So let's make an example right here. Blank percent of the variation Y is explained by the variables in the tree. And let me go ahead and get a decision tree that looks halfway decent for us on the screen. This tree right here only explains 3% of the variation or 2.9 to be exact, and that's the R squared. 2.9% of the variation in whether or not people are born in Tennessee is explained by the variables in the tree. And that's not much variation at all. Very, very, very little of the variation. We'll make one more decision tree right here. Let's go to analyze, predictive model, partitioning, and let's predict, uh, let's predict whether or not someone's in the honors program. We're just gonna grab a whole bunch of X variables right here. We're gonna remove favorite phone app. And so let's put all those in there. We don't wanna put honors program because we're using that. And we're gonna remove major. And let's put these right here. And here we are. We can actually un, we can remove the color on the points. And let's go to rows and clear row states because this is a quantitative, oh, we are predicting honors program. So we should recolor the points here. So you can see the honors students are up here and the non honors students are down here. I'm gonna go away from the speed run for screen for a second. We'll be right back to it. But I need the full screen to show this and let's split the tree. As we would expect, the honors students are the students with the higher GPA. So this one's making a lot more sense and we're getting a much better R squared. And you can see right here, uh, students who are in the honors program are students basically with really high GPAs. Let's go ahead and look at the leave report right now, which is our last thing to understand. We have four leaves. And one thing I want to point out right here, and this is so very important, is the following. When you are looking at this leave report, I always want you to think about it this way. In your leave report, you will have here leaf one, leaf two, leaf three, and leaf four. And these leaves go down the following, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 
right over here, we have the distribution of the Y variable, which is what you're seeing right here. This is all the distribution of the Y. It is the, I'm going to highlight here in a second what it is, but it is this right here is the distribution of the Y. That's the distribution of the Y variable, which is also shown to you right in here. That's the distribu distribution of the Y variable. Over here, you have the X variables that are the splits. These are the X variables it's splitting on, which is like GPA, GPA. Uh, that might look like I'm highlighting GPA there, but I'm just trying to highlight this. So GPA, the top portion right there, is what we are splitting on, and that's the variable we are splitting on, and the Y is the distribution right there that looks like a bar graph. So very, very important, we're looking at the distribution of the Y variable, and then these are the X variables right here that we're splitting on. So those are the Xs we're talking about. Very important to understand to know what's going on with this output right here. Now, if you look at where the majority of the honors students are at, let's zoom in on this output here a little bit, and we can see the largest proportion of honors students are in LEAF 1, and these are students who have the following characteristic. They have a GPA greater than, greater than or equal to 3.84, and they have a GPA greater than, greater than or equal to 4.32. So these are the really high GPA students, and it makes sense that the majority of them are honors. The students who are least likely to be in the honors program, only less about 1%, 1.19%, and there's 1,016 of them. You can also see down here, there's 12 students who are in the honors program, 1,004 who are not. And you'll notice right here that these students have the characteristic that they have a GPA less than 3.84. And then this is also the bar graph of the following distribution right here, because this is leaf four. So it's very important to be able to connect this data together and understand where your Y variables are at and where your X variables are at. These are the X variables right here which are the blue highlighted portion. So hopefully the color coding here helps you a little bit and helps understand what is going on. This is a uh, categorical tree right here where we're looking at the different groups. Now, one last difficult question, which I'll leave you with right here to end off and we'll remove out our little help guide is what proportion of students who have above a three or a 3.84 or greater were in the honors program? So here's a tough question to end. Let's put the question on the top of the screen at the end of the speed run right here. What proportion of students who have above a 3.84 were in the honors program? What proportion of students who have above a 3.84 were in the honors program? So if you're looking at this, you're actually considering all of these students right in here. These are students who have above a 3.84 here, 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 and if you look, it's actually this group right here. This is where people usually get stuck and they say, how can I find an answer to this group all the way up here when I'm giving the information down below? But I'd like you to think about this for a moment here and think, wait a minute, this is group one, group two, and group three all go back into this group. They're all a derivative, derivative of this group. So going down to the data down below, we can look at group one, group two, and group three. Group one, group two, group three. Well, we see here, these are the students in the honors program in those groups, which represent uh, 27 students right here. That's 27 students. So let's make a little, little annotation of that. That's 27 students. And as follows, we'd have the other students, 49 students right there and 35 students right there. It looks more because there's less students. There's only 123 in that group. So what would we do, do right here? We would add together these numbers and we'd get 35 plus 49 plus 27, 111. And let's go back up here, 111 out of this amount right here. So 889 or 111 divided by 889. And there we go, 12.48. And let's go back to the screen here and let's hop back to the speed run screen. Let's go back to speed runs here. Let's do it. Oh no, it restarted timer. <laughs> We can't have the other timer on the screen. That's got it right here. We'll bring up the actual notes so it looks a little bit better. But we've covered all the topics right now, uh, understanding how to make decision trees, how to read decision trees, how to read the leaf report is very, very important to understanding how to the theory behind decision trees. And with that, our speed run is over. Whole decision trees done in just over 14 minutes. We haven't we haven't uh, we haven't had someone challenged to a speed run in a long time. Uh, easy scape. This is to you, man. Time for you to do a speed run. Just got to make it happen, man. Statistics speed runs is where it's at. There we go.